Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. This week, we're going to continue our journey into the world of Final Cut 10.4 color correction. Mark's going to show us a look that he's preparing using all of the tools. But yes, we're going to do the uh, ever popular orange and teal look. The ever popular. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, so this is a look that's used constantly in blockbuster movies and television shows. And it, it's, it's used a lot, maybe overused, but there's a good reason for it because the whole idea is it builds on color theory, okay? So, you know, with contrast, we talk about contrast of dynamic range where you spread apart the brightest and dark parts of the image mm -hmm. to create more contrast. Right. It makes an image pop. But you have the same idea of contrast related to color. You can have color contrast. Like reds so, and greens or blues yeah, and yellows. Yeah, op opposites, right. complementary colors. So orange really refers to skin tone color of any race, all skin tones land on the same hue uh, on the vector scope, on the color wheel. Group hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of that is, is roughly uh, blue teal, cyan in that neighborhood. So the idea is to create color contrast to pull those colors apart so that you make human subjects uh, stand out from a background. So your brighter colors are orange and more saturated and your, your darker colors are blue and they, they're pulled apart, there's more contrast, and it makes human subjects really pop in a scene. So that's the idea, so let's, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna start with this shot from a, from a film you did uh, in San Diego, and we have this shot here, and it already has uh, colors that are kind of along that skin tone line, because there's primarily skin tones in here. But our, our goal here is to stretch that out wider, keep it along the line and stretch it out. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is just perform a basic correction before we get started, because we can see it has pretty uh, low uh, dynamic range. There's nothing very bright in here. Instead of manually going to the color wheels, which I wanna use, if I go to preferences in editing, you see I've set my default correction to color wheels instead of the color board. What that means is if I just hit command six, I'm taken directly to color wheels, right, just, which, is, which is what I want to use. Color board won't even come up. Yeah, just what I prefer to use. So what I'm going to do is do a real basic correction. Maybe I'll bring down the shadows a little bit in anticipation of bringing up the highlights and bring those up just to open up the tonality a little bit, give it a little brighter and already have a nice pop. Right. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I've created some keyboard shortcuts here and I'm not going to go into detail them, but you can see I've, I've got my own color correction commands here. So I want to toggle that off and on, and I don't like clicking on things, so I'm going to use option C. I'll oh. toggle that correction off and on. So nice. So I can see what I've done right away. Um, another thing I'm going to do is, under the edit menu, there's a default video effect, which I've changed to add color curves. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm going to press option E, which is the shortcut for default video effect, and get color curves. So now that I have my basic correction in place, I want to attack trying to pull some uh, you know, blues into the shadows and some reds into the highlights. So one way to do that, and there's many ways to do this by the way, is I'm just gonna pull down on the red curve to kind of introduce some of the opposite of red into the shadow areas and pull up in the highlight areas. Yeah. And if you notice the vector scope, if I toggle this off, off and on right now, I'm toggling just this correction off and on, see how the vector scope has expanded yeah. Okay, and so we're introducing more color contrast by doing that. So she's got some more punch in her face, the background's a little bluer, and it creates kind of a nice look right there. So option C will toggle just that correction. I've had another keyboard shortcut to toggle all my corrections, which is control option command C. I just hold all those modifiers <laughs> down. Yeah. In fact, to see that, option command four will go back to the video inspector. And then if I hold down Option Command Control C, we can see I'm toggling them both on and off. Wow, these keyboard okay. shortcuts are, are key to working quickly. They really are. So I'm just going to Command 6 to get back in here. And from here, I'm going to add a hue saturation curve. So I'm out of cheap keyboard shortcuts for that. So I'm going to add that manually You used here. them all up. <laughs> I did. I used, I used them all up. Um, before I do that, actually, before I go in there, I do notice I'm a little bit off of the skin tone line, very slightly, because I've, I'm really adding red you know, we saw we use the red curve, so right. it's pushing a little bit towards red. So I'm gonna go back to um, just Option Command 4 to the inspector here and go up to the, I can rotate through these different options. I'm holding down Option Command and tapping the arrow keys. And wow. This is something else I assigned. That's very Because nice. I'm gonna go back into my original color wheels correction 
and go down to these temperature and tint controls. If I drag a little bit in tint, you, tint, you can see I'm just shifting that back onto the skin tone line. Yep. So tint allows me a very nice adjustment. Just make sure I'm adjusting skin tone, not necessarily red. Okay, so from there, let's go back to our hue saturation curves that we added right here. And now we're gonna to start to have a little bit of fun. So first thing is, this water is... You're right, I'm not having any fun <laughs> no up fun. to this point. <laughs> no fun. Just kidding. I'm enjoying this. No, this is great. So the water is pretty cyan, and it's a little fake looking. So <laughs> what, I'd, what I'd like to do is I'm going to sample in hue versus hue the water, and I'll pull that. I don't know which direction to pull it in. I can drag. I can also just use the up and down arrow keys oh, nice. to move that, and I'll make it a little bluer so it looks a little bit more natural. From there... I want to play around with saturation a little bit. So I'm going to bump up the saturation just of the skin tone. So I'll use a sampler for hue versus saturation. I'll sample the skin tones and try out. Again, I'll use the arrow key just to pop those up a little bit. I don't want to go too far, but I can get some nice saturation there. And maybe while I'm at it, because the water is a completely different area, I could sample the water here and Maybe pop that a little bit too, give that a little more saturation. Or if I don't want to get too much attention to it, I could pull it down. If I really want to focus on the talent and not bring too much attention to the water. Maybe, the, these are, maybe this bring it down a little bit. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from there, I want to think a little bit about luminance. So the skin's pretty bright here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the hue versus luma curve. And by the way, um, let me do something. I'm going to double click the top of the inspector so we can see Full the entire height. thing. Yeah, yeah. There's six curves here. These first three all have to do with hue. I'm changing the thing on the right. So the way I think about these, you're always changing the thing on the right. Mm -hmm. So I'm selecting a hue, but I'm changing its hue. I'm changing its saturation. And now I want to change the brightness or the luma of that hue. So I'll sample her. And I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to tap the arrow just a tiny bit. And it brings a little bit more detail and definition to her, her face where I'm bringing those luminance values down. It's a little bit too bright, but I'm keeping the brightness of the rest of the yeah. scene. So let's toggle just that correction off and on and we can see the difference yeah. so far there. And she, you know, she's got some nice skin tone. She really pops. She really comes out from the background. Yeah. One thing that can happen though, if we look at the vector scope, in fact, let's go ahead and toggle all our corrections, control option, command C, and we can see how we've really stretched uh, that contrast out, Color right? Color contrast. Yeah. yeah. But we've introduced color into the deepest shadows. And sometimes you really don't want that cast in the deepest shadows. And that's what the Luma versus Sat curve is great here for. So these last three curves all have saturation in the right-hand part of the name. So with all three, we're changing saturation. I only want to change saturation of the darkest parts of the shot. I don't need to sample here. What I can do is I'm going to add a, a control point. I call this a lock point right. because I want to lock in all the brighter values of saturation, but I just want to bring down the darkest um, saturation. It looks like it's got a, almost roll, it rolls off to the lock point. It does. So I'm, I'm bringing out all color cast. I'm desaturating the shadows. Mm -hmm. And then I can select this guy. I've hold the shift key while I drag. I won't go up or down. And I can choose where that roll off happens. So I could have yeah. all the darker parts have no saturation. I can kind of pull that back and decide where yeah. to dial You're that kind in. Of, it's actually biasing towards the shadow. It's a it's a bias curve. It really yeah. yeah. So it pulls all that all that color out of the deepest shadows. It treats it very nicely. From there, I'm going to skip the sat versus sat, but this allows you to balance overall saturation. Right. So you can take things that are too saturated and pull them back, or things that mm -hmm. aren't saturated enough and pump them up. But I'm going to go down to orange versus sat, and this is kind of cool because you can do additional tweaking to skin tone here. You might think, well, wait, I already did skin tone in hue versus sat. But this lets me control the saturation of skin tones at different brightness levels. So for example, um, I don't really need to sample first because if I click this downward arrow here, we'll see that we're already on the skin tone line. Wow, look at that, there's a skin tone so line. If I, were, if I were to sample, it's gonna be almost the same, but I can choose exactly what color to sample either by dragging here or by using the sampler to sample the skin tone. Then I can choose, well, I want the, you know, the mid-tones, just the mid-tones of that particular color to get a little bit more saturated. And maybe I'll bring down the, the darkest parts of that a little bit. So I have very fine-tuned control just on skin tones, where I can take the brightest parts and adjust the saturation, the mid-tones and adjust the saturation. So 
these, all of these curves in the hue saturation curves corrections, when used in combination, are really powerful. Let's, let's turn that one on, off and on. So that's off, that's before and after. And then we can turn it all off and on with uh, my keyboard shortcut, Control Option Command C. That's where we started, and we look in the vector scope as well. And that's where we ended up with very good separation between the foreground and background. That looks amazing. It really does. And the fact that you were able to just go through those curves like one after the other to build this composite effect without actually even using nodes. And yeah, and then yeah. if you want to make adjustments, if I use a keyboard shortcut to move through the corrections, Option Command and left and right arrow will allow you to quickly switch through. Because you might decide, oh, I want to go back to my original correction and just bring those shadows down a little bit more. So you can quickly toggle through these corrections and work on them to tweak them to get them to look just the way you want. So wow. I, I absolutely love the, the color correction tools well, in 10.4. I, I get that. I get your enthusiasm <laughs> for these curves. Yeah, very fun. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. So you want to check out Mark's advanced color grading tutorial. Again, he's scratching the surface so much more. Groundy covers. And you really can get the image looking pretty much the way you want it. Um, very, very little need to actually jump out into another app anymore with these tools. So um, check us out on our usual social media channels and uh, look forward to the next version where you're showing us something else about color grading in Final Cut 10.4. So we'll see you next time.